In this presentation, we'll be talking about using Bentley's Flowmaster to work on gutters and inlets. This is one of the more advanced topics uh, for Flowmaster. It's a very practical tool to be able to do a quick sizing calculation of an individual inlet and gutter. Now, if you're doing complex systems, you need to go to something like StormCAD where you have multiple gutters and inlets and carry over between them. But if you just want to analyze a single inlet uh, in a gutter, this is the way to do it. There's a lot of flexibility and power in this tool. Okay, to start off a new uh, inlet, we just go to a new worksheet, do new worksheet, and let's start out with a great inlet on grade, okay? It's a pretty common use case. All right, so we have here the, the usual kind of dialogue that you get when you open up Flowmaster. It's asking you for to specify the uh, individual parameters you want to enter for that particular item. And in this case, we're going to solve for the efficiency. How much of the flow do we intercept? Okay, so let's say we have a flow of one CFS heading down the pipe and the, the, heading down the gutter, and the gutter's got a pretty mild slope of about 0.3%. The gutter is about two feet wide. Cross slope, let's give it about an 8% cross slope for the, the gutter side. And then as the road slopes a little more gradually, the camber is a little less, it'll be about a 0.02 for the road and we'll give it a also 0.02 for the Manning's end for the hydraulic calculation. So that's uh, how you specify the gutter, but we're not really ready to do the full calculation because we got to say something about the grate. That's what we're solving for. So the grate width is going to be, let's go at about a one foot grate width and it's about three feet long, okay? And we're not going to have any clogging in this particular case. So we do the calculation, and we see we get about a 90% efficiency. So we're capturing most of the flow. So of that one CFS coming down the pipe, uh, 0.9 is intercepted. But we have a pretty wide spread here. We have an 8-foot, 8.7-foot spread, which is kind of high. So we may want to do something to, to change that to get a little bit uh, less. And we see the, the splash over velocity here is, is almost 10 feet per second. So we're not getting a whole lot of a splash over. Instead, we're getting kind of flow bypassing the inlet because of the degree of spread that you have. So let's make the grate a little wider. Maybe we can capture more of the flow if we make it wider, and this would uh, help us have uh, less carryover and less spread. And we see we've cut down the spread a little bit by making a wider gutter. But we're, uh, we're now capturing 92% uh, of flow. And we get the other gutter parameters here as far as depth of flow and the, the wise part of the gutter. And we could also look at our cross sections. If we just look at the cross section one on one, it's not that exciting of a look. You know, it just tells you the spread, tells you how deep the flow is. They want to get in here and change our aspect ratio, give it a little bit of vertical exaggeration so we can see what's going on a little better. Okay, most of the flow is going down the gutter and into the uh, the inlet, but we have some that's being uh, spread across the road, which is what we usually try to uh, reduce. Okay, so that's the situation for grade on inlet. So let's take a little more complicated situation. It might be a, a combination of, uh, well, let's go back and look at our, our options first of all. Okay, so we go worksheet. And we have, you know, as I said, many different options here. We have curb inlets as well as grade inlets. We have ditch inlets. We have slotted inlets. And we have combination inlets. And we have them both in a sag situation and on grade. So the most complicated one here, I believe, is the combination inlet in the sag. So let's go and, and press our luck and try this one, okay? So we have a lot more. We have to specify the gutter characteristics, the inlet characteristics, the grade characteristics, and the curb inlet characteristics. So There's quite a bit. So let's just stick with our, our 1%. Uh, we go with the gutter width, uh, about the same as last time. We did 1.5 at the end. Uh, cross-section slope was about a 0 0.08, and a road cross-section of 0.02. That was pretty much like we had in the last one. The inlet now is a uh, local depression is going to be about say three inches down and the width of the depression might be let's say about 10 feet across the grade itself is going to be uh what, one foot wide and three feet long and we're not going to have any clogging again and the curb inlet now this one here is going to be three feet long and let's say about a uh, half foot high okay so now we can go through and calculate this, and we see that we're uh, going to be capturing, let's go here, 
uh, have a spread of 1.97 feet. So this is a, a little bit less spread uh, along the way. So that's a, that's a good indication because we're solving for spread in this particular case. And if we reduce the flow, let's just look at the effect of reducing the flow. And we see that it goes down to only 1.39. And again, if we'd like, well, one of the things we usually like to do is look at this in terms of, of uh, rating curves, or let's look at the cross section. That might be fun to look at, and that's what the cross section looks like. Not too exciting in this particular case. It's a curb inlet. Um, let's look instead at the rating curve, and we want to do discharge versus spread. That's a good one. And let's let's vary one of the other parameters as well. Let's look at uh, modifying the. Uh, <coughs> The curb opening length. Let's see if we make the curb opening a little wider. So we're going from two feet to five feet, one foot increments. And we're going to have to discharge vary from essentially zero CFS up to one, which is our high value. And we're going to look at it in increments of 0.1. And we have this set of graphs. And we see here that in general, it's not very sensitive. Uh, varying the curb inlet length. We only get one graph for all of these, uh, which kind of surprises me a bit, but that's what it says. And uh, what you have then is that you can see how the uh, the discharge rate or, or the flow down the, the gutter uh, affects what the spread is. Okay, so let's go back and look at that again. Let me save it. Look at that. So we see that by, you know, as the flow increases, the spread uh, you know, it gets consistently wider, although with the one foot wide uh, gutter, it doesn't really get, it takes a while, the, the flows get pretty good before it gets outside of the gutter. Okay, so we have, as, as I was saying, a lot of options when we're working with the uh, curbs and inlets and, and gutters. There's, uh, the, if you need more information to it, we have the provided uh, a lot of excerpts from the HEC 22 manual because it's really the calculations here are based on HEC 22. So there's a lot of definitions that some of you may not be familiar with all the definitions. So we've we've used the sketches of definitions of uh, of slopes and depressions and widths of, of things. So just go to help if you have questions. The curb inlets, we also give you the definitions of how we calculate things and also uh, show you the formulas that are used in these calculations. So it's not as if you're uh, just making up numbers. There's a lot of documentation that goes along with these calculations in the uh, Flowmaster. Okay, so that, that uh, summarizes the presentation on uh, gutters and inlets in Flowmaster. And as you see, it uh, gives you really quick calculations and gives you a good idea of, of some of the important parameters you're interested in, which are usually things like efficiency and spread are usually some of the things that you're looking at when you're trying to design gutters and inlets. Okay, thank you.